Are you interested in building safe, growing, passive dividend income and safe, growing wealth? Looking for the very best way to accomplish that? Wondering why you shouldn't just buy high yielding stocks? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best selling author. 30 year old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. Stocks are phenomenal instruments for building wealth and passive income over the long term, especially dividend growth stocks. These are stocks that represent equity in world-class enterprises paying reliable, rising cash dividends. How are they able to do that? Because they're producing reliable rising profits. And that's because they're providing the world with the products and or services it demands. By doing so, they're able to make gobs of profit, which they directly share with their shareholders. But you might be thinking, why not just go after the highest yielding stocks out there? A stock yielding 10% must be better than a stock yielding 3%, right? Well, not really. One of the biggest mistakes I've made over the years is chasing yield. And I wanna save you from making that same mistake. If your goal is to build sustainable and rising wealth and passive income, you should generally avoid high yielding stocks. I'm talking about stocks yielding five or more times what the broader market yields. When you see a stock yielding 8%, 9%, 10% or higher, that's almost always a red flag. Why? Let's dig in. Let me start this off by being very straight with you. High yielding stocks are very often junk stocks. That's right. When you see a stock with a super high yield, your first inclination should be to automatically assume it's a junky business. Unless we're in the midst of some kind of highly abnormal situation like the pandemic crash last March, which can create a situation where otherwise quality stocks are temporarily and accidentally offering very high yields, a high yielding stock is often a poor long-term investment. Instead of chasing after stocks with yields of 10%, you should be thinking about investing in high quality dividend growth stocks with yields of between 1% and 5%. High quality dividend growth stocks don't usually offer a super high yield. They don't have to. Their stocks are in demand, which drives up the valuation and lowers their yield. All else equal, price and yield are inversely correlated. So a higher price will result in a lower yield. High yielding stocks sucker you in with that high yield on the sticker, but you gotta look under the hood. What will you usually find when you actually take a look at the fundamentals? A poor business. That's often evidenced by a long history of cutting dividends instead of raising them. It's a long-term cycle of value and income destruction where the business will routinely cut its dividend and see its share price drop, but the yield will stay high because of the dividend staying somewhat intact and the price dropping so much. A 10% yielding stock that cuts its dividend by 20% and then sees its stock drop by 20% will still yield 10% after all of that, which can trick new investors into thinking they've got something good. I'll give you an example of how chasing yield can eat away at your wealth and your passive income. I've heard so many investors over the years tell me how I should buy Annaly Capital Management Inc, stock ticker NLY. They've touted the yield and pointed to how that could produce a lot more dividend income than the lower yielding stocks that I typically invest in. Well, I'm glad I didn't listen to those yield chasers because this is a perfect example of what a poor long-term investment looks like despite its high yielding appearance. The very first thing you must do as an investor is to look at and understand what a business does. You should always be thinking like an owner. And what exactly does this business do? Apparently the company borrows money primarily via short-term repurchase agreements and reinvests the proceeds into asset-backed securities. That's easy to understand, right? Not. As the great Peter Lynch once noted, you should never invest in any idea that you can't illustrate with a crayon. If you can't easily explain to a child what a business is and how it makes money, that's a problem. NLY yields 10% right now. 
Looks great, right? Well, that's until you realize the dividend was 65 cents per share per quarter in 2011. It's now 22 cents a share per quarter a decade later. That's one third of what it was paying before. While high quality dividend growth stocks are regularly and reliably increasing their dividends, Annaly Capital Management is regularly and reliably decreasing its dividend. If an Annaly Capital Management shareholder has been trying to live off of their dividends, they've seen their passive income and purchasing power massively deteriorate over the last decade. This is the exact opposite of what you want to accomplish with long-term investing. Long-term Annaly Capital Management shareholders are seeing their wealth and passive income slowly evaporate. Annaly Capital Management stock has compounded at an annual rate of less than 5% over the last decade. High quality dividend growth stocks like say Johnson & Johnson, stock ticker j and leave it in the dust. Johnson & Johnson has never offered that huge headline yield, but its compound annual growth rate over the last decade is triple that of Annaly Capital Management stock. I mean, Annaly Capital Management stock, the price is lower today than it was in 1997. That's been a terrible, terrible long-term investment. More importantly, while Annaly Capital Management has been cutting its dividend like clockwork, Johnson & Johnson has been increasing its dividend like clockwork. In 2011, Johnson & Johnson's dividend was 54 cents a share per quarter. It's now at $1.06 a share per quarter. This dividend has been doubled while Annaly Capital Management's dividend has been cut by two thirds. Johnson & Johnson is a golden goose laying ever more golden eggs. Annaly Capital Management is, well, most certainly not a golden goose and any eggs it lays are shrinking in number. High quality dividend growth stocks like Johnson & Johnson offer you an attractive return on your capital. Low quality, high yielding dividend cutters like Annaly Capital Management offer you an unattractive return of your capital. Big difference there. If you wanna see your passive income and your wealth grow in a sustainable and reliable way over the long run, choose high quality dividend growth stocks and run far, far away from high yielding stocks that often make for poor long-term investments. Annaly Capital Management is just one example, but there are many like it out there. Stick to quality, don't chase yield, know what you own. Build your own gaggle of golden geese that'll provide you with an ever larger pile of golden eggs. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did and let us know in the comments what you think about high yielding stocks. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the fire fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early thirties. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who've been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.